So thanks for coming. So today, Zhenghuo will talk about the recent work with the Jina and Oda about some scary title, like right? something unified, with generalized things of lower tennis classes. Okay, please. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, today I will talk about some kernel results on some generalized covering and packing problems on sparse graph class, which is called a lower dense class. So this is a joint work with Jina Kim and Oh Jung Won. So since the definition of a kernel is different from that of the internal workshop, I want to recap the definition for some parameter fixed parameter factor value. <laughs> so. Let pi be a decision problem, meaning that the answer is either yes or no, and it is parameterized by non-negative integer k. And we are going to say that this problem is a slice-wise polynomial, or uh, xp for short, if there is, exists uh, some algorithm solving that problem in this time. So fk times n to the gk. So you can easily see that if we fix some constant for k, then uh, it means that these problems can be solved in uh, polynomial time. And even more, if the function g is constant in k, then we say that it is fixed parameter practical. So it means that no matter how we uh, fix the k, the order of the polynomial in time uh, doesn't change. It is well known that some problem is fixed parameter tractable if and only if it is uh, decidable and uh, admits a color. So now the definition of a kernel is as follows. So a kernel for the problem of pi is a polynomial time preprocessor algorithm that basically takes some input instance i comma k and try to return some equivalent instance i comma k having small size, where small means that it is bounded above by some function h of k. So now here uh, h is referred to the size of the kernel and if its size is polynomial, then we say that this problem is always a polynomial kernel. So it's a totally different from the last definition, right? But there are some intractable problems. So in XP problems, there is some hierarchy uh, showing at the top, uh, like uh, FPT is uh, contained in W1, W2, da, 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 WP, and is contained, contained in XP. So some problems are not fixed parameter trackable, for instance, dominating set problems and independent set problems. So dominating set problems uh, <coughs> asks for a graph G, whether there is a dominating set S of size and most K. And the independent set problem asks for a graph G, whether there is an independent set of size at least K. Uh, one of well-known results of Downey and Fellows is as follows. So dominating set problem is W2 complete, and independent set problem is W1 complete. But don't care about this W hardness. It basically says that they are both uh, unlike unlikely to be fixed parameter tractable. So these problems are hard. So what can we do more? So one meta question is this one. Uh, do <laughs> these problems <laughs> are easy on some restricted input graphs? So we are going to shrink some input space so that our scorer becomes a scary warrior <laughs> on the region. <laughs> so we want to find uh, some polynomial corners on some restricted input graphs uh, so that it can be a uh, fixed form tractable. So the candidate for the, uh, the restricted graph classes is sparse graphs. So let me introduce a very nice picture by Felix Lidl. Uh, you, I think that all of you agree that spark, uh, these forests are sparse graphs. So we can generalize it to the outer planar, planar, or more bounded genus graphs. So also starting from some forest, we can generalize them to bounded previous graphs. And it is already known that uh, all these sparse graphs are excluding some topological minor. But there are more sparse graph class concepts called uh, graph class with bounded expansion and the weird dance. So let me give you some formal definition of these sparse graphs. Sorry, before, before going there, I mean the reason you say the color is important is because yeah. you, they say that they, you only need to consider kind of finitely many instances. Is that no, we uh, consider actually infinitely many 
instance. So no matter how you give me an instance, I will always uh, output some small yeah. instance, which is say the same answer to the problem. Okay, there's finite in some sense uh, instance property. Anything has an equivalent finite size instance. Yeah, yeah, parameterized yeah. by k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to define bounded expansion graph class and over dense class, we need some local version of the minor. So a graph H is called R shallow minor, where R plays a radius law in the induced graph induced by this each vi. So it's nothing but minor, but we want to find uh, some minor where each part has a bounded radius. Don't you want to say that VI induces a connected subgraph? Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, connected one. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. GVI is a connected graph having radius in most R. Okay. Well, actually, uh, yeah, it's not connected, then radius is defined by infinity. Oh, so, right. yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. But it's safe to say that it's <laughs> okay. connected one. Right. And <laughs> anyway, see. yeah. The bounded expansion is that uh, the class is called the bounded expansion if there exists some function f, so that no matter how we choose a radius r, and also any r shallow minor h of g, its uh, h density is bounded uh, above by some function f r. And even more, a class is called nowhere dense if there is some other function g, such that no matter how we choose a radius r, it does not contain the large complete graph as a R shallow minor. So since complete graph achieved the maximum edge density, uh, you can easily see that uh, every bounded expansion graph class is a nowhere dense class. That's why uh, nowhere dense class is at the top of this figure. Sorry, would you go back to the definition of nowhere dense? Ah, yes. So the bounded expansion implies nowhere dense. Can you slowly explain why? Then <laughs> you just say one sentence. Yeah. Because complete graph has a largest possible uh, edge density on each number of vertices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are some known research about the uh, dominating set problems on sparse graph graphs. So on planar graphs, Arbo et al. show that it adduces a linear kernel, means that it is, it is now fixed parameter tractable on per planar graphs. And Bowman and Tillichos extend this result to the bounded genus. And also uh, Bowman et al. Uh, in other paper, they show that it, uh, on excluding a minor, or even more, excluding a topological minor graph classes, we can uh, always give some linear kernel about this problem. And on bounded expansion graph classes, uh, Grange et al. show that these problems are uh, a linear kernel on every such graph class. And even more, yeah, Ike, Meyer, et al., including Ozhang, show that it is it admits uh, Kernel of size big o of k to the over epsilon for any epsilon on the weird dense classes of graph. Can, can I ask one? So uh, when you say size of kernel, do you mean the number of vertices? Number of vertices. Usually it's like binary length of the binary encoding, right? But yeah, 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 yeah. Talking about number of vertices. Yeah. Th thank, thank you about that. Uh, but uh, in these problems, we only consider the number of vertices. Mm -hmm. So since uh, we can take any arbitrary small epsilon here, this is why uh, this corner is called almost a linear corner. But the last two lizards actually did more. We will now consider some generalization version of the dominating set called the distance R dominating set. So in the distance R dominating set problem, uh, it asked that, that uh, for a graph G, whether there is a set S, such that its size is at most k, and it contains Vg as a subset in the R's closed neighborhood of S. So note that if R is 1, 
then this problem is nothing but domain eating set. So this is why it is called the generalization of the tab problem. So when you define nr, it includes neighbor of uh, distance r minus 1, r minus 2, and so on, or just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all distance and most r. Not exactly r. So what they show are as follows. Grant et al. show that even these problems admit the linear kernel on this bounded expansion graph class. And Eichmeier show that uh, it admits the almost linear kernel on the very dense class of the graphs. This is for fixed R, right? For fixed R. For fixed R. Each fixed R. Mm -hmm. We can also think some generalization of an independent set problem in this manner. So in distance R independent set problem, now we are going to find the set I of size at least K, such that uh, two vertices between them, uh, the distance between them is larger than R. So again, if R is 1, then the problem is precise and independent set problem. So uh, there are also some non lizard about the distance or independence problem that uh, Fomin et al. show that if we exclude the sub apex graph as a minor, then the problems of the a linear kernel. And Philip Jog and Sibert show that on bounded expansion graphs, it admits a linear kernel and on, on almost a linear kernel on the real dense class of graph. So <laughs> now it's our main lizard. Yeah. So you generate from Dali E, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Oh. I learned it from Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to generalize this distance R version further. So to do this, we need uh, this definition. Uh, it's a uh, piece of power of GP. I know that, uh, I think that everyone knows, but let me recap it. So in the graph, the adjacent is uh, determined by the existence of length and most P paths between them. So two vertices, U and V, are adjacent in GP if and only if there exists a passable length and most P in G between them. So then now, PRF cover is defined as follows. So let P and R be non-negative integer, and F be a family of graphs. And, uh, for a graph G and a subset A of the vertex set, a set S is called the PRF cover of A in G if there is no set X in A delete R's neighbor of S such that uh, the graph induced in GP by X is R sum repeat to some graph in F. <coughs> so we first try to delete the R's neighborhood in G of S and try to see what happens in the remaining vertices. If there is no set x such that gpx is isomorphic to some graph in f, then we say that it is a PRF cover. Can you draw some pictures? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very confusing. A and x and <laughs> s. So this is g, yeah. and these are, this is an a. And we try to find some x, set x, s and try to delete this n, r, g, s. And if there is no x here, such that g, p, induced by x is in f, if there is no such x, then we say that it is a PRF cover. So, Know that yeah, it's at the first time it's hard to catch the definition, but yeah. Mm. But if you fix the p as a one, then it is easy to see the intuition to define this definition. So you can see that one r k one cover is the distance r dominating set. Is there any other question about the definition? So why do you consider this definition? Because it has many applications. Many problems can be written in this form. Mm -hmm. 
do you have a reason why you want to select A particularly? I mean, A could be... A is usually, uh, you can think A as a hold of protection for EG, but the reason why I introduced A is for a proof idea. Uh, for the proof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for the proof. Yeah. You can think it as a for total protection of EG. So similarly, we can t uh, think uh, PRF mm -hmm. packing is as follows. So PRF packing is a collection of subsets of A, A1 to AL, such that each one induces some graph in F, and the distance between them is larger than R. So in the PRF packing, so here is A, we try to find A1, dot dot AL, such that each of them induces some problematic graph in F, and the distance between them is larger than R. So again, uh, if we fix P to 1 and F to be a uh, set containing K1, then 1 R K1 cover, uh, sorry, packing, is a distance R independent set. So all these concepts generalize this distance R dominating set and independent set of. So again, uh, naturally, this PRF covering problem asks whether there is a PRF cover outside the most k, and PRF packing asks whether there is a PRF packing outside the least k. And now it's uh, our first main leader saying that uh, only the this part, but the important part is that there exists a polynomial time algorithm that when we are given a graph G in the class C and some vulnerability integer k, we can either correctly decide that this gamma number is large enough, or we can output some small graph G prime that preserve in the answer. So this will give us uh, almost a linear kernel on the wear dense classes of graphs. We can similarly find the linear kernels on classes of graph with bounded expansion. And for the packing, the packing problems, we can, we can also uh, derive some similar leisure. We can either decide that alpha is zero or large enough, or we can always find, construct a graph G prime having a small number of vertices and preserving the answer for the problem. Yeah, okay. I mean, I have a question. So if you have a first two consequences, could, couldn't you just produce some arbitrary G prime with that satisfying these things? Hmm? Uh, in this case, we already know the answer. Yeah, but so, yeah, so, so you already know the answer, so you can just produce. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can, in that case, we can offer some trivial instance. Trivial instance, so yeah, yeah, yeah. the answer is the same. Yeah, so it's only enough to prove this theorem, mm -hmm. to derive some connect. So why these are important? <laughs> because it has many applications. <laughs> So let me give you some first thing, uh, applications. Uh, the first one is about vertex cover and guarding cell. So now you can understand the distance R burden of vertex cover. It's nothing but that uh, if we delete the R's neighborhood of D, then it has a no edge. And the distance R guarding cell, meaning that if we delete N to the R minus one's neighborhood uh, of the vertex set, then it has a no triangles. triangles. So the name comes from art gallery problem. So yeah, about uh, this card set. There are some known results about this, this uh, numbers. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see that distance are vertex cover problem can be written as one comma r comma k2 covering problem because the remaining graph has no edge. So yeah, it's nothing but cover all the edges here. And the guarding set can be written as this, this form. So 1, comma r minus 1, comma k3, covering. Uh, didn't you write PRF cover? Yeah, so yeah, PRF cover. 
So I am confused. So that means because they take out just the one, just the first power, they don't take out power. So. Yeah, I mean, so can you, can you go to the slide? So, so P is 1 here, right? Yeah. So that means you're looking at the... Uh, edges, of, edges of the G, right? That's right, that's right. Um, but... Uh, can you go back to that? Maybe I missed the definition. Ah. Oh, so you delete the... Oh, I see, I see. Okay, never mind. Oh, okay. All right. So I got the... I see. So you're not taking G to the R. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Dalla will characterize the graph H on H free graphs, the problem because polynomial time solvable. And these people compute some of these numbers on maximal outer plane graphs. So there are some literature uh, studying about these numbers. And our lizard implies almost linear and linear corners on sparse graph classes. Next application is F3 for text deletion, which has uh, so many applications in uh, algorithmic graph theory. So formally, it is defined by defined as follows. So let F be a family of graphs, and this problem is ask for graph G, whether we can delete at most K vertices so that the remaining graph has no induced subgraph, isomorphic subgraph in F. And this one is nothing but 1, 0, F, because deletion is uh, first take a zeros neighborhood and delete it. So it can be written in this form. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if every element in the class F has at most D vertices, then we can write it as a D heating set problem. So D, D heating set problem is uh, on the uni finite universe U and take a subset of U as a, a. And the question is whether there is a, some heating set X of size at most K such that, uh, yeah, yeah, that heats every element in A. So if every graph in F has a uh, most D vertices, then we can write the above problems as the D thing set problems. So for the finite F case, uh, we can take uh, some corner by well-known some flower lemma. So with some flower lemma, D thing set problems are the uh, corner with at most uh, big over K to the D sets on the and most the K to the D elements. And our exam show that this problem is actually the mid uh, corner on at most k to the d minus one vertices. But there are also some negative leisure. So Dan and Van Merkebeck show that for every integer d, this problem doesn't have a corner with this many number of sets, nor a corner with this many number of elements. By elements, you mean the union of yeah, all? Yeah. Okay. And the the size of the universe, uh, meaning that, uh, yeah, the union of all the sets. But on sparse graphs, on sparse graph classes, we can do more. We can build this phenomena by showing almost linear and linear corners on these problems. With some additional condition that F is a collection of connected graphs. Now let's move on to the uh, packing problem. So the packing problem has some application in matching. So distance r matching is a matching where between two edges, the distance between them is at least r. So when r is 1, this is nothing but just a matching. And when r is 2, then it is an induced matching of g. Yeah, where i and j are in 1 and 2. So the pro distance are matching problem asked whether there is a distance are matching of size at least k. And when r equal 1, we can solve it by, uh, by well-known blossom algorithm. And if r is at least 2, then we can, we can write this problem as this 1, comma r minus 1, k2 packing. Mm -hmm. 
there are also lots of literature studying about uh, studying about this problem. And actually, for small r here too, Mozo and Sikhar show that this problem of this linear kernel on planar graphs and cubic kernel on graphs or of graphs at least six. Uh, yeah, and also linear kernel on bounded degree graphs. And Kaz et al. Uh, extend, I mean, improve this color by dropping the constant to 40. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there is more further generalization of this matching uh, problem. It's called H matching. This is uh, nothing but K protects the joint collection of subgraphs where each subgraph is isolated to H. So we can also write this problem as our setting. So by taking f as the set of all supergraphs of H on the same number of vertices, uh, we can write the, that problem as a one comma zero comma f packing problem, right? Because if we hit some H as a subgraph, that means that if we, it means that we hit some supergraph of H as an induced subgraph. So data max presents the corner with k to the two point five edges. And for every d at least four, they show the P D matching the means a corner with this cubing number of vertices. But they also present some lower bound for this problem. They show that unless co MP is a subset of MP properly, these problems does not have a corners with this number of edges. But we show that on sparse graph we can do more. We can actually find the almost a linear corner and linear corner in sparse graph process. Mm -hmm. So, do I convince you why this problem is important? Uh, so here you require H to be finite, right? So, yeah. Previously, so far you didn't require H to be finite for other examples, did you? Um, oh, you no, still have a finance. finance. Yeah. Is, is it important? Yeah, finance okay. is important. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. <laughs> if you have no question, I'm gonna give you some proof idea. But because of the time limit, I can only give you some proof idea for the first problem about the covering problem. So let me recap the main result here. So we are going to construct some uh, polynomial time algorithm that given a graph G in the Novaire dense class C and some K, uh, either correctly decide uh, that gamma number is larger than K or con construct a small G prime, preserving the answer for the problem. Um, so to... Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Time to read it. So we, what is F G of V? Oh, that's the function. It's just the name of function. Okay. For a cover. Yeah. Um, oh, the finiteness is needed because of the parameter B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I see. And actually, this is the why I defined the PRF cover for some annotated burden about the A. So to solve this, uh, to prove this theorem, we need uh, some annotated version of the previous problems. So here, uh, we are going to, we first take a subset A of the vertex 3G, and now our goal is to try to find the PRF cover of S of A only, not the whole double text set. That's why, because the region we want to dominate is restricted, that's why this is called annotated version. Ah, so mistaken. And most k, and most k. And we denote by g, comma, a, comma, k be the instance for this problem. And if a is vg, then this is nothing but an instance for the original problem. So the blueprint is here. 
we first we need to construct some small instance which is equivalent to this instance or the coupling problem. But we already know that this problem is equal to the annotated version with this folder protect set. And with the annotated version, we are trying to construct some G prime whose size is almost linear in K and try to go back to the first problem, to the original problem. That's our way to prove this theorem. Can you go back to the, the previous slide? Okay. Is there some reason why p is, has to be less than or equal to 12 plus 1? Ah, that's a super technical problem. Yeah. So do you require that in the main statement? Yeah, yeah. In mm -hmm. the main statement, we, we actually have, have it. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, here. Okay. Okay. To do this, we need some uh, several ingredients to show the theorem. So the first ingredient is approximation algorithm. We can always find in polynomial time the solution for the problem that has this many number of vertices. So uh, to, do the, to do this, we need a VC dimension. So VC dimension of graph G is defined by the basic dimension of the set family consisting of all the closed neighborhood of the uh, vertex. And other other lines show that <laughs> every power of the graphs in the real dense class of graphs has a bounded VC dimension. And it is already known that there is a approximation algorithm for the heating set on bounded VC dimension set families. So combining all these regions we can find, we can construct an approximation algorithm for this problem. So, this is that the result that uh, there exists a polynomial time algorithm that always outputs a solution PRF to cover having size slightly larger than the minimum possible value in polynomial time. So the second ingredient is a super nice property of the novel dense class of graphs, which is called uniformly quasi-wide. So I will explain why it is called uniformly quasi-wide. Uh, so the class of graph is called uniformly quasi-wide if there is some function, n and s, so that if we take uh, this many number of vertices, then we can always find the distance are independent set B in G grid S by deleting some small number of S. So no matter how you, how you choose uh, some large number of, large number of uh, vertices, yeah. if the size of A is large, then by deleting some small number of, actually constant number of vertices, we can find the large distance or independent set. So the distance between these two vertices are larger than R. So the, so the reason why it is called uniformly is because it doesn't care about the structure of A. It only cares about the size of A. And the quasi-wide is that wide is definitely from distance R independent set. And quasi is because of this S set. It's not actually distance R independent, but by deleting some small number of S, we can make a uh, distance are independent. That's why this is called uniformly quasi white. Mm -hmm. So, what is, yeah. what is M? M is the size, the size of, yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah. Are you saying they for all M? For all M. For all M. Yeah, so for all M is missing probably. So that's ah, sorry. Ah, yeah. So for every M. I'm just trying to read the definition and then. Yeah. So for every m, 
and whenever you have a large set with respect to this uh, as a function of R and M, then we can find the distance R independent of set B over sides at least M. I see. So you also have a quantifier R, right? So for all R and M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so for all R and M, yeah. you can find whenever you have a large set, uh, you can. Now, what's what's not clear to me is what, uh, can I just say S is empty? No, no, no. Oh, these things are independent in GDVS. I yeah, see. Yeah, GDVS. GDVS. I see. Okay. Okay. And the secretary and also the vendors who introduced all these sparse graph concepts show that every nowhere dense class of graph is uniformly cut wide. So I But n is depending on r as well? No, uh, r and m are independent. Uh, I mean, just a is bigger than n as a function of r and m, but s only depends on r. Oh. Uh, and, uh. Sorry, s only so, so, so basically, this is at least m. But uh, that n function is if it's super larger than okay. m, then yeah, we can always find what's M mm -hmm. Okay. And the creature et al. show that uh, we can find the such B and such S in polynomial time. Yeah. Oh, can okay, you go back? So okay. polynomial time where the uh, I mean, there must be running time depending on C, right? So how? Ah, yeah, C, but uh, it is uh, yeah, polynomial. Uh, it's polynomial for every C. Ah, so for each fixed yeah, C. Yeah, or, or it, for mm -hmm. each fixed C. Mm -hmm. And they also show that this function n is polynomial in n, where the order is uh, depend on R. Okay. Okay. The last ingredient is PRF core. Is that uh, a PRF core of A in G is a subset of G, subset of A, such that if we have a minimum size cover of G in G, that is also a PRF cover of A. So PRF core is really a core to cover hold the set A. So it suffice to cover the PRF core to cover G, or to cover A. Yeah. So then now, uh, to show the main theorem, <laughs> it <laughs> suffice to show this lemma. Yeah. Since we move on to the annotated version g comma a comma g comma a comma k, and a is a trivial core of a, right? If we cover a, then it cover a, right? So starting from trivial core a, we are going to shrink the size of core by finding some specific vertex z, so that g delete z is a steel core of the previous set. So to show the main theorem, yeah. it suffice to find uh, that specific vertex G to shrink the core. Core, uh, being a core is a transitive thing? Like, don't no, 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 it's not transitive. I mean, what I mean is, out in the output, you say g minus g is a core of g, but, and then g is a core of a, right? So do you want to say that g minus g <laughs> is uh, a core of a? It's actually a, then we can, but we can reduce it to j, set. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you, you, you can think it of a, yeah, that's a good question, but yeah. I see. So the constant yeah, because the z is a core of a. Yeah. Mm. 
So now our goal is to try to find the such a podcast Z. And the main idea is uh, this one. So since we can uh, we can find the large distance are independent set B, if there are many vertices seeking the same patterns, then we can choose some of them as a as the desired vertex Z. So we are going to first find the uh, many vertices seeking the same pattern and try to delete it from the core and try to argue that Z minus Z is a periodic core. So, yeah, these are all the information, pattern information we need. We first try to find the uh, all distance r prime information from that vertex and some other vertex near V to this x union S, where x is the approximation solution uh, by the first of, uh, approximation algorithm. And then we try to find uh, some all the Boolean functions. We try to construct these two Boolean functions. So the first Boolean function try to capture all the neighborhood uh, graphs near B. So in each V, in B, if there is some weird graph in some F, then we capture it by giving the value of the Boolean function one. So, for every labeled graph on vertex set L, where L is the most D, we will do uh, such a thing. And we will construct a similar Boolean function on G by seeking what happens in the graph G delete S. So, that's our, all the information we need. But the number of patterns made by these steps are constant in K and N. So it means that if the previous M was too large compared to K and N, then we can always find some pattern by Pigeonal principle that are that is uh, observed by many number of vertices. And we will try to choose some any arbitrary vertex Z from them. So now our goal is to, to show that by contradiction that g minus small g is a periodic core of a and g. Oh, you're showing it as a, right? The, the statement is that g. Ah, uh, a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, main technique is sewing. <laughs> So this is color will yeah so some <laughs> some parts so that we can find uh, some short paths that will derive some contradiction up to distance or independent step. So because uniformly quad wideness, we know that there are many vertices uh, which are distance are independent except for <coughs> this step. And each of the vertex may have some part which are in the our uh, obstruction set F, right? And then uh, let D be a minimum side periodic core of G minus G in G. If this is not a core, then we may assume that D is not a periodic core of Z in G. So there might be some problematic set, this red set, that is not covered by that uh, dominating uh, that cover D. Then we try to delete S, and what happens? We try to see what happens. Uh, because we delete S, some this the previous graphs will be shattered by this part, and some of them might have some passes to this set. But we can show that we can show that if we replace this part with this part, they will al always make uh, some isomorphic copy of the previous obstruction. So previously they are connected, but if we delete S, they are shattered, 
And some of them may have some pass short paths to this one, but the number of data sets are very small. So except for that, uh, we can find the many new parts for this one, so that if we replace this part by this one, then all of them will construct a new obstruction. But then this cover should cover that, that obstructions. But we can show that uh, each, each obstruction is covered by all distinct vertices in G. But remember that the number of the independent set is large. It means that this part is also large. So in this case, we are trying to find uh, some smaller set, which is a purple set. Here. So we can show that this purple set is, so we will first delete this one and try to add this one to make a D prime. So the size of D prime is strictly smaller than D. So it is not a chaotic cover because we assume that B is a minimum size chaotic cover. But some sewing method, we can show that it is actually a chaotic cover of the A, which will drive some contradiction. So I think that it's not that good idea to explain why you can <laughs> So <laughs> with this one. Yeah, but uh, anyway, we can find uh, some, uh, this U is contained in the distance of independent set, but we can find uh, some short length pass from U to this X set. So that we can always find uh, some B, some specific purpose B. But B is later shown that it's contained in actually the purple set, and it dominates it covers this parametric uh, one. So in this sense, we can drive a contradiction. So, yeah. So Z is, you can show that actually small Z was uh, irrelevant to vertex for being a core. Any other? <laughs> yeah. The last step is going back to the original graph, original graph problem. So to do this, we are going to attach some small gadget called the PF critical, where PF critical is a graph satisfying one of the following. So the first item is that if H is just a one vertex graph, and the class F contains a one vertex graph, then we say that it is a PF critical. The second one is very important, that uh, if H has at least two vertices, and uh, H P's power has an induced subgraph isomorphic to a graph G, but if we delete any vertex, then uh, its power has no induced subgraph isomorphic to a graph in depth. So it's uh, something like a vertex critical. And we can actually show that uh, one can construct in polynomial time the PF critical graph uh, when F has almost a deeper vertices. So by attaching this graph as a gadget to this instance, we can construct the small instance G double prime, comma K double prime for the original problem. That's how we get a almost a linear corner for the first problem. Okay, uh, let me close my talk with some open problems. So what can we do if f is an infinite class? So for instance, a uh, cycle of length at least four, or some fields, uh, we don't know the answer. The second question might be uh, as follows. Can we derive some similar corners, even if a finite class f of graphs has, has uh, disconnected graphs? So remember that uh, I require f to be a set of connected graphs. But if it contains some disconnected graph, there is some technical issue. So I wonder whether if the app contains a disconnected graphs, uh, it also contains a similar corner. 
Okay, this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? So you get a linear size kernel for bounded expansion and almost linear for no air dense, right? Yeah, yeah. And what is the key property of bounded expansion class so that you can get a linear size kernel while you cannot do it for no air dense graph? That's that, that's very nice question. But yeah. Uh, uh, we can actually apply all the same method to the bounded expansion similarly. But the difference is that there is some uh, closure lemma, closure, taking a closure lemma. So in the nowhere dense class of graphs, if we take any set x, uh, then there, in, in the whole graph, there might be a path connecting these two. But we can, uh, it, we can show that We can take a small closure, XCL, so that if there was a path between these two of the small lengths, then there is also a small path between them in XCL. And the size of XCL depends on whether it is a bounded expansion or no wear dense. So if uh, it is a bounded expansion, we can make it as a linear in the size of X. But if it is on the no wear dense class of graphs, we can make almost linear. That's why almost linear can always have uh, Rightly, more than this classical graphs. And actually, there are more landmarks uh, similar to this one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, for, for, for those algorithms restricting the input, sometimes you want to have a robust algorithm where you don't know where the input belongs to your class C, mm -hmm. and then you may want to say that. Maybe the algorithm doesn't know whether it belongs to the input, but the one of the potential output is that oh, your input graph doesn't belong to C. Like, do you see what I mean? Like, can you? Mm -hmm. So you have this canalization algorithm, assuming yeah. that input is from C, but can you modify the algorithm so that uh, one of the outcome is that input is not in C? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if some of the step fails, then the algorithm can certify that the, the input is not from C. Well, well first of all, the opposite of the algorithm is in, in the lower dense class of graphs. And, uh, but uh, we, can, we can apply similar algorithm to the powers of lower dense class of graphs. Mm -hmm. Or even more we can, we, we can do. So if we are given some, some first, or, first order formula, which preserving the existence also of a length at most p passes. And we, if we try to uh, transduct via this first order formula to the mm -hmm. real dense class, then we can, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you're answering, you're not answering my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, maybe nice that uh, if the algorithm can actually tell that this input is wrong. Uh, at, some point, at some place. I have no idea. Uh -huh. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a, like some some extension uh, in terms of uh, first of the formula? Instead of describing as domination and packing, uh, can we do something on a certain class of first order formula you can? Instead of the problems? Yeah, I mean, to, to make it more general. Um, so no idea, I have no idea about that, but uh -huh. yeah.